Um, I have the uh, the quilt uh, in a, sort of a stopping point because I ran out of bobbin. Uh, so I thought this would be a good opportunity to uh, uh, take a break, show you how to reload the bobbin, and uh, every time I do uh, change the bobbin, I also give the inside a little dust out. Uh, periodically I'll take the whole uh, bobbin mechanism out and really give it a good cleaning. Uh, but uh, I don't know if you can see the the crud that my, this is just an old beat up paintbrush that works pretty good. Uh, you can buy uh, brushes that are designed for uh, cleaning out a uh, machine, but I find a cheap old paintbrush works pretty good. Uh, I didn't, it hasn't been that long since I've oiled it, so I don't need to do that. Uh, but uh, a little, little dusting doesn't hurt extra chunks of lint and dust in there uh, will uh, uh, can have a tendency to mess up your stitches. So I have a, a full bobbin. Uh, the way this machine works is this is a, a, a drop-in into the uh, um, little bobbin uh, case here. So it drops in and uh, I got a loop. Let me see what's up with that. Looks like I overfilled it and got an extra bit there. That would have definitely screwed me up. So let me get that out of there. Okay, try again. So it goes in, and then there's a little, a little groove here. That thread goes under and Cross. And then once it's in, that there's another little notch there that thread comes across. So this is how it operates. And then there's a little slot in the uh, uh, cover plate that uh, that will come up through. Now when I thread the do the top uh, again, I usually use a uh, uh, a little uh, bobbin on the top here. The thread comes up from the cone stand, uh, and if I didn't bring it through this spool pin, uh, it tends to jump up and down a lot, and sometimes it can come out. So by guiding it through one of the holes in, a, in an empty uh, bobbin there, uh, that helps to keep it in line. So it goes through the first notch, and then up through here, and uh, this hook here, uh, when you doing normal stitching on a Singer 66. The thread just goes under like that. Um, but there's also a hole in it. And if you're doing free motion quilting, uh, it works better if you, well, I crossed it. Because I should have done that. It works better uh, if you go through the hole. Then uh, it goes up to the thread uh, lever here, then it goes over to the side, then it goes through this uh, thread guide here, and then I get a clean cut on this, it'll go through the needle. turn forward, we'll pick up that bobbin thread and that pulls it up and through. So now we're threaded and ready to go. Um, so what I have so far here, uh, you can see I, I did the, the feathers around the edges and I filled in the, the center of that feather grief. I'm going to go back and work on the outside and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in uh, so you can see uh, the stitches closer up hopefully. Um, so give me a second for that. So there it is a little closer. 
Uh, to start with, I need to get my uh, bottom thread up, so you simply put your presser foot down, figure out where it is you want to start, drop your needle, pull it up, there's the, there's the bobbin thread, and uh, now I can start sewing. Um, I'm going to go around the outside of this uh, to do a secondary uh, line that will uh, highlight the feathers better and then I will um, uh, go back and work on some, some of the background. Uh, kind of untangle my thread and I need to get this one in there. Huh? Now I brought that one up. Turn it. There we go. Now both of them are in. Okay. Now the uh, uh, this machine. Remember the feed dogs don't drop. So you have to uh, set the stitch length to the shortest position that it'll go in, uh, and uh, that takes care of the uh, the feed dog problem for you. And so I'm just going around and doing a uh, secondary line around the, uh, the feather wreath that I already uh, did. This will help to uh, give me some separation between it and whatever I end up doing as the background fill. And I haven't decided on that yet. And uh, there's no there's no real rule for that. Uh, whatever whatever works best for you. What I am finding here is that um, my uh, my, my hands are not uh, gripping that real well, so I need to get a pair of gloves. Okay, gloves. They have uh, gripping uh, rubber on them, and that's going to help me guide this better. Um, some days I can, I can guide it through no problem, and others it just doesn't want to grab. Today I felt like I needed the gloves. I think perhaps part of that is uh, based on how humid it is. Uh, also, maybe how rough my hands are. The, uh, the challenge, as always, is to uh, Guide your fabric and move your feet at a speed that makes your stitches look nice. Um, if you move too slow, you're going to have microscopic stitches. If you move too fast, you'll get gaps and skips. And uh, it'll look weird on the back. You'll end up with strange looking spots where it just doesn't uh, doesn't come out nice. At least that's been my uh, experience. And that's why I like the fell. Because it's easier for me on this than on a uh, machine with an electric motor. It's easier for me to regulate the speed. Now, some of the newer, really fancy machines have a, uh, a motor that lets you essentially turn it down so it's, it runs at a slower speed. And I think that would be, if I were doing uh, free motion quilting on, on, uh, on an electric machine, that's what I'd want. Because I find that um, 
I get uh, really uh, bad uh, results when I'm trying it on an electric and you know, and, and being forced to go pretty fast. If I can keep it slow, um, I feel like I'm in more control. I feel like I can regulate my stitch length better. I feel like I can regulate the design better. I just feel like everything turns out better. Now that I'm all the way around, on the other side of this uh, wreath, I did uh, some lines down the center of each of those uh, parts of the feather. So I'm going to go travel back to the middle. And I'm going to do that. absolutely drive yourself crazy on is trying to be perfect in your uh, back stitching. So trying to make the, the line uh, of stitching go exactly on top of the previous one. I am in this section when I go up and when I come back, I'm intentionally going a little bit off so that that line has some width to it. I, I like it better that way, so I don't have to make it perfectly one row stitching directly exactly on top of the other. Um, but it can be done. See, I could, I could go back exactly on top, but I like to look better when it's uh, got a little space. It's a matter of personal preference. And again, everybody does their feathers differently. If you have to stop while you're quilting, Always try to stop at a part uh, at a place where uh, it, it won't show as much. So if you stop right at the at the center, that's a that's a good stopping point. But if you stop in the middle of particularly right in the middle of the curve, you may end up uh, having it look real obvious if you stop there. So, Uh, if you can, it tends to work better, I think, to keep your hands a little further apart than you might feel like uh, you want to. Um, because it helps you to see more. Um, the other thing that I think is, is uh, kind of helpful is to learn not to hunch over. Uh, you know, I have a tendency to want to get right in there and have our face right on top of the, uh, the needle. And uh, you lose the big picture. And you really can't see what you're doing as well, and you'll just wear your back out. One of the other potential problems that I, I see people having is uh, I think most people have their sewing machine too high. Now, what do I mean by that? Um, this machine and this particular treadle base is uh, 31 inches to the top of the machine from the floor. Um, a pretty um, standard. Um, I, some of my others are 
between they're all between twenty nine and thirty two inches, uh, you know, and depending on the manufacturer. But they're they're fairly standard in their height, and that's a pretty decent height to uh, um, be able to uh, uh, sew at. Now, if you have a portable machine and you set it on top of your dining room table, which is already higher than 30 inches, and then it sits that high above the table, the machine is up here as opposed to down here. So my arms are higher, it's putting extra pressure on my shoulders, and it makes it harder. So if you're having back and shoulder pain from quilting or sewing, I think it may be helpful for you to consider finding a shorter work table that is um, closer to 30 inches to the bed of the machine. And I think that would help you to uh, relax a little bit when you're sewing. It might seem odd at first if you're used to sewing much higher than that. Um, but it does, I find, make a big difference. see where I'm going with that. Now I need to decide what to do on the outside edges. Um, and I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do. Let's see. Now well, first I need to get there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to travel down one of the stitch places rather than have to stop and start. Every time I, 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 you know, and that's why I've left these threads on here, because what I'll do is I'll thread this onto a needle and tuck it onto the inside. Then there isn't any uh, um, places where the thread can unravel. Uh, so I like to stop and start and cut the thread off uh, the least amount of times as I can. So travel down that line to get back to the outside. And let's see. What if I do... segment off the back so I can do a few different things and uh, that curvy line will be the start of uh, how I uh, break up the back. have a big edge that isn't quilted, uh, so I'm not, I don't usually quilt this close to the edge and it wants to stick.
after I get this area filled in, I'll run another line of stitching over the top of that where the, where the uh, um, quilting went over my line, and that will hide it. Um, at least that's my theory. We'll see. something in there. Uh, maybe I'll do like I did the center here with little pebbles. Uh, let me travel back uh, and show you how I did those. Like I said, I don't like to stop and cut off the thread. Uh, so I need to quilt out to a point where I can get over to the next section without stopping. So when I come out over here. Um, you want 
to have a, a more, I think I want mine to have a more random appearance. And uh, making them uh, all in one great row after another uh, does not uh, lend itself to that random look. It makes them look like they were uh, intentionally placed in, in order. So if you just sort of meander around and build them out to uh, fill up where the space you're working on, they'll, uh, they'll fill in. So that uh, what I was just working on there is how I filled in the center here, and um, that's that's basically it. And you can see they're not perfectly round, and they're all different sizes, but I think I, that's the look I like. So I'll sort of mark off a space and uh, fill that in. I'll go back and fill this in. I'll mark off some more spaces around and fill the whole background in. Uh, but uh, then I'll have sort of a, uh, a nice little uh, beginning of a, uh, probably it'll become a pillow cover. Uh, but anyway, that's, uh, that's free motion quilting on the uh, Singer 66 treble.